Uh, Karen, it's lovely to chat to you today. Um, would you mind uh, just in introducing yourself? Sure. I'm Karen McCormick. I'm the Chief Investment Officer for Berengia, which is a venture capital firm with $600 million under management across the U.S. and U.K. Great. Um, and Karen, tech investments and digital transformations, they're growing uh, at an unprecedented scale uh, today. What do you think retailers should be doing uh, in order to kind of keep up with this and, and, and survive the next wave of the digital revolution? I wish I had a golden ticket for what retailers need to do to survive uh, the next generation of technology. I think to some extent it's trying a bit of everything and seeing what works for your business. But in terms of the things I think everybody needs to be on top of, AI, I believe, is genuinely going to be transformational. And I don't mean that in the sense that everybody should start building out AI teams. Um, there are software packages, and there will continue to be better developed software packages that you can buy off the shelf to apply AI to your business. And I think it will become basically a necessity rather than something in the future. I think there are opportunities to use applied AI today as well. I think mobility is something else that we need to be on top of, not just drone deliveries, but things like the way consumers tend to get from place to place will sometimes dictate the way they're going to be shopping. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and who do you think the real kind of innovators are within that space? I mean, I think Amazon is, is generally well known for being on top of things, and I, I think they probably are, and they're pretty good at experimenting. I think yeah. Walmart through Store 8 often does a number of interesting, innovative things. But what we often see are the retailers that are the startups and the seed businesses that have to use the scrappier types of technologies to make their businesses work, in part for capital efficiency, and be, in part because it just works, and not having legacy systems to have to deal with makes it easier for them to experiment. Yeah. So I think looking to, towards the, the, the large established businesses is a good place to look for benchmarking, but also understanding what's happening at the startup end of the market is really important. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of technologies, which technologies are exciting you the most? I mean, for me, I, I think a lot of – the most exciting technology that I see is AI because I think it will make a lot of the businesses more – um, efficient, cost-effective, and better for consumers. Mm -hmm. But I think in terms of kind of major trends, I think some of them aren't specifically driven by technology, but instead leveraging technology. Mm -hmm. And things like multi-channel e-commerce, or multi-channel commerce, which we've been talking about for ages, I, I think there's really kind of um, uh, a significant amalgamation now of not just is it e-commerce, is it mobile commerce, is it app commerce, is it bricks and mortar. It's basically however the consumer shops. Um, at any time you want to. And that might mean shouting at your Alexa in the kitchen while you're cooking dinner. So I think yeah. technology is enabling us to shop in different ways. And AI, I think, will actually have a significant shift um, to the bottom line of businesses and create a competitive edge and over time just a necessity. But I think just the convergence of all different types of shopping and channels is probably one of the biggest trends that everybody needs to be embracing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and are there particular areas within commerce that you think retailers should be focusing on? So, you know, is that their stores? Is it their, their e-com? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think any retailers can afford to really be single channel at this time. Um, I think the best retailers are going to be omni-channel, and I don't mean omni-channel again just in either e-commerce or bricks and mortar, but it also means app commerce, it means mobile commerce, it means Alexa commerce, it means echo commerce, it means basically any way the consumer wants to shop however they want to shop. And I don't actually think many businesses can afford to be either single channel or dual channel. We have to embrace basically all the possibilities to get to the consumer. Yeah. And, I mean, it's maybe a bit of a fool's game kind of trying to guess the future, but how do you think the commerce industry might look in five years? What do you think this evolution is, is going to look like? Yeah, I, I keep going back to AI, but I think within a five-year horizon, or even within a shorter horizon, AI will be significantly embraced by the commerce industry um, across all different types of businesses and channels, and I think it will be applied and in play, um, which will hopefully help increase the customer experience while reducing costs and improving efficiencies at the same time. Um, I think one of the other trends that we will definitely have embraced within the next five years is um, omnichannel retail, which is, again, shouting at Alexa from your kitchen, uh, yeah. just like the, using app commerce and mobile. And that's super, super interesting. Um, and let's so I think this one, one other observation. I mean, one of the things that we are seeing, especially at kind of the um, earlier growth end of the market. Yep. Multi-channel retail, while we see a lot of the department stores struggling and dying on the high street, we are seeing um, an increase in multi-channel e-commerce, which yep. is interesting. Um, and we're seeing an, an increase, um, increase in improvement in results.
results for um, mono brand shops on the high street, and I don't mean kind of rolling out 50 to 100 of them, but having one or two selected shops in the right locations seems to be um, driving a reasonable amount of success at the early end of the market. So do you think location and, uh, I guess, merchandise, things like that in within stores, do you think that is going to – doing that, getting that mix right is going to be the difference between losing and winning on the high street? What, what do you think? Is there a kind of secret recipe for – for 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 a, a successful retail store. No, I, mean, I think physical retail these days is all about experience, and the experience has to include the product. We can't just have a great experience and forget to sell products. Um, yeah. But I think experiential aspects can be as simple as being able to um, use and try the product in appropriate settings, or mm-hmm. it's much bigger like coffee shops and music and other forms of entertainment in store. So I think for for bricks and mortar, that's quite helpful. I think one of the things to think about especially for earlier stage businesses, if you are a monobrand retailer or a single product retailer, it's very difficult to get traction and to um, kind of market your product appropriately online unless you're ready to spend many tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars marketing online. Yeah. And most new businesses and most new brands online are going to be distributed through, multi, uh, through multi-brand retailers, yeah. which is probably, I think, multi-brand retail uh, is almost more successful online than offline. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and in terms of kind of uh, the, the retailers that are kind of winning in, in the physical space, are there which are your favorites? Which are exciting you the most? I, have to say, I believe Selfridges still does a really good job reinventing itself pretty frequently. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. the amount of change and the amount of dynamism within the business and just within the floor space at Selfridges remains really interesting. Yeah. Fab. Thank you. Um, that's all really interesting, Karen. Uh, moving the, the discussion on to tech now, um, what are you most looking forward to at tech this year? There's quite a lot to look forward to at tech this year. I think one of the sessions that I'm particularly interested in, I believe we've got um, Weldon from Amazon coming in to talk about how game theory um, has impacted kind of um, or applied to their pricing transparency, which I think yeah. will be really interesting. And then given I'm in the VC space, I'm really looking forward to the startup stage. So I think tech gets stronger and stronger every year. And one of the benefits of tech is that while it brings together um, blue chip retailers and people within the consumer industry to talk about really topical issues, it also brings in people outside of the consumer industry to talk about how their learnings can be applied to the industry. And I think those are some of the most exciting things, um, specifically talking about automotive um, and the progression of kind of the automotive and mobility industry, how that will impact retail and consumer, and then also talking about applied AI in other industries and how that will mirror what it's likely to look like in retail and consumer in the future. Awesome. That's great, Karen. Thank you so much for your time, Karen. I'll, I'll be in touch soon.